You are not broadcasting live. So I am time loop. What is it? Basically, I am time loop is this broad social experiment, and we're trying to prove that time travel will be uh, available sometime in our lifetimes. And we're, we are <coughs> shamelessly bandwagoning on December 21st, 2012, as the date that uh, this will potentially happen. And so the idea is basically uh, <coughs> try to get as many as people as possible to decide now, uh, before December 21st, 2012, that at any point in your lifetime, let's say if you live to be 130 or 300 years old or something like that, because as uh, technology advances, we're gonna be able to live longer and longer. But if at any point in your lives, you have the ability to travel back through time, you will hop on a ship and make a jump back to December 21st, 2012. So that's basically the concept. Uh, the reason we need so many people is because if you think about it, uh, there's about 7 billion people currently on the planet. And out of 7 billion people, uh, since we've been able to travel through space, only 500 have ever actually made it into space. So right now, <clears throat> we have like a 1 in 14 million chance to actually be an astronaut. So we need, <laughs> we feel that sometime in, in our lifetime, uh, you'll have a similar chance to travel through time. So we need, what in? Time travel! <laughs> uh, what year are you from? What? what year are you from? 2012. All right. <laughs> so we think, we feel that, I'm feeling better now. We feel that somewhere, sometime in your lifetime, you'll, you'll, you might get that chance. And then... Uh, but in order for that to happen, we need to convince a lot of people right now. Uh, because even with one million people, we would need four, only four, you have a one in 14 million chance right now to go into space. So that's how we need, we need to like convince today. So that's really the concept. Uh, we picked December 21st, 2012, not because we feel that the world is coming to an end or there's some grand change that's gonna happen. However, if our project is successful, you know, it, it would create a grand, a grand change. <clears throat> but we picked that date because what have you been hearing for the last five years, pretty much, constantly, like this, this date has been like yeah. broadcasted through media. It's like at a thousand, <clears throat> over a thousand mentions in, in different books. Books have been written just about this date. So we have all this free media already available. So we definitely aren't... Uh, has that, sorry to interrupt you, has that actually helped you like to get uh, that date uh, pushed in your event? Did that get you more attention? Oh, I, I, well, what we feel is that as that date gets closer and closer and, and, and then the media circuits are all looking for different stories to talk about, like right. we've all heard the same story over and over again, Apocalypse, or asteroid hits the planet. We haven't quite heard this story yet. <laughs> right. So, right. so we, we, we feel that once uh, the media is looking for those different stories, uh, our story will be picked up. Uh, it'll start to kind of like skyrocket. Because our, our, we, we really, our mission really is to prove tr time travel is, is possible. So I think it, it is possible. Because if you think about it, uh, Lady Gaga, do you own her Facebook page right now or Twitter? She had 40 million fans. <laughs> Lady Gaga. So if Lady Gaga, Gaga can get 40 million fans, or fans, uh, hopefully we get a million, and if we get a, and hopefully we could get even more than that. So we have a couple goals. So we have to convince out of out of those million people, we have to convince only one person uh, who's who's crazy enough or ambitious enough maybe, <laughs> to actually wait all that time, because it could be uh, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 100 years before we actually get that technology. One person out of that, a million, a million people, has to be willing to actually make this trip back. And if that one person makes that trip back, think about it like this. Uh, what we're doing is we're organizing uh, 10 different parties across the world. We have one in uh, Kathmandu, Nepal. We have uh, one in uh, 
Puerto Vallarta. Puerto, 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 what is it? Uh, Puerto Vallarta. Puerto Vallarta. We have one starting in Brazil. We have one in Fargo, because that's where the idea actually started here. We have one in Oregon already. That's got quite a, quite a few followers. Followers, And these parties, we're, we're connecting them all together with Google chat groups. Uh, so we can basically have this constant stream during that day on, on December 21st, 2012. So you have all these chat groups, all these parties connected. Now imagine somewhere in one of those parties, uh, somebody actually <laughs> comes back, maybe I should type this in the word, and says that they're from the future. Well, how do you prove that someone's from the future? Uh, so, so we've created this idea brought that up but basically it's it's kind of it's a it's an encrypted message that we've encrypted and only me and Nicholas Joyride who was the uh, first person who kind of uh, started helping me helping me with this campaign we created this encrypted message and we will reveal the message uh, 30 minutes after December 21st 2012 and kind of broadcast it throughout the world so if they're a time traveler since in the future that future their message is already decrypted, they should be able to bring us that message undecrypted. And if it happens uh, in, in uh, Kathmandu, Nepal first, I promise you I'll be in Fargo shitting my pants. <laughs> 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 Can I say that? Can I say that? Oh, yeah. cool. Okay. They're college students. <clears throat> but we, we won't be able to, uh, <laughs> we won't actually reveal the, the true encrypted message until uh, until our time zone on December 21st, 2012. Now think about this though. So originally you had that one crazy person who today was crazy enough to believe in this project enough to make that entire journey. The second that that one person or a millisecond afterwards that one person reveals himself and kind of lets the whole world kind of see it. Now suddenly so there's one person you have an entire world who's like time travel exists and it becomes like this moment in time that you probably won't ever forget. So we first had that one person who came back. Now we have an entire world who's like, holy shit, time travel exists. And now you've inspired that the globe a second after that first person reveals himself. So now you have this flood of people who are like, well, well, for one thing, once, once that person comes back, we'll have time travel a lot sooner. Because he'll bring the technology with them. <clears throat> but now you have all these people who are like, that was a great party. I want to go back too. I want to go to December 21st as well. Yay, December 21st. So now suddenly December 21st becomes like this global or this universal <laughs> party date on our planet where time travelers come back and just kind of hang out and we're, we all have this great time and we party together. So Eric, um, I want to talk to you a little bit about. Uh, the brand that you guys did. Sure. Um, so you have this kind of like, what is this called again? Ouroboros. Yeah. Ouroboros. Ouroboros, okay. And um, it's kind of the symbol that you've used for your I am time loop and really nicely branded throughout all your stuff. I've just been looking at it uh, while you're talking here. Um, you have that was our of, very first image right there, which, uh, which is actually my ex-girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> she looks like she's a project. But because uh, I've been I've been really fascinated with time travel since I was in third grade, and so I've just been doing various projects like this. But yeah, that's the only one that actually does not have the snake uh, symbol on it. And uh, you know, but it, this is the image you kind of branded yourself with on your timeline yep. for a lot of it. Um, and then you know, just going through here, you've taken kind of a screen capture of your yep. analytics. Yeah. So what we're trying to do and. We're I'm going to show you a video here, video here shortly, is uh, which was basically my my biggest inspiration on, in this project, and uh, which is uh, making me you know stand up and talk about it, even though it's, I'm I'm very not, I'm not good at that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but my inspiration for the project uh, was this video that I'm going to show you, it, and it's basically a video on how to create a movement, and and uh, and one of the lessons you learn in it is that in order to create a movement, it's not about the leader, it's about uh, the people who are being a part of it, who are basically the first followers, is what is what it's is how they put it in the video. 
And so uh, in order to, to get that momentum, you have, to make, you have to make sure that everybody feels like they're a part of the process. So through this whole you know, six weeks, <coughs> every step of the way, whereas most people, you know, this, the information that we're showing is usually reserved for the person that's trying to make the money or the marketer sales people, <coughs> we've basically been sharing it with everybody so they can kind of get a sense of this growth that they're, that they're a part of, that they're helping. And the excitement. Excitement. <laughs> yeah. So we just keep on broadcasting that out. Uh, so we've been, you know, systematically plugging that. Another thing that we've been doing is anytime we hit a milestone uh, amount of people, you know, we broadcast that out. We just put like, so for you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna stop doing that at 10,000 because uh, we're it's already getting hard to maintain that because we, we went from uh, it taking us a week to get 100 people, then taking uh, half a week to get the next 100 people. Uh, a few days to get the next hundred people. Then it went to a week to get a thousand people, uh, to half a week to get a thousand people. And now it's taking us about 36 hours, every, 30, every 36 hours getting about a thousand people. <clears throat> and we just see that it just keeps on going. So we're guessing that after this 10,000 mark, uh, it's gonna be hard to uh, keep up with that. Plus it's gonna get annoying. It's just gonna be like, bam, bam, thousand, thousand, thousand. <laughs> <laughs> so we're uh, gonna stop doing that, but we're gonna we're gonna start doing like the ten thousand marks, you know, the, the bigger ones. And we're gonna broadcast those out. Eric, so like I noticed you had this little uh, this was kind of a joke, um, yeah, classified that somebody put up, and they made a movie out of it. Right. And there's so much uh, kind of obsession with time travel in books, films, yeah. comics, everything. I think that I think it's because I personally feel that. We are on a we have, uh, technology is advancing so fast because if you think about it, uh, just a little over 100 years ago, uh, Lord Calvin uh, proclaimed that uh, heavier than air machines are, are not possible, and Lord Calvin was a basically an acclaimed mathematician, a, a physicist from his time. <coughs> Eight years later, after he said that, the Wright brothers actually invented a flying machine and it, and it flew, and that was about 100 years ago. Uh, just a few months ago, since that time, now, now go 100 years in the future, just a few months ago, we just landed a, a one-ton remote control robot on another planet. <laughs> so that's the difference that 100 years can make in technology. So we're starting at remote control robots on another planet today. So just imagine you know, what the next 100 years might give us. That's why I'm pretty confident that we but, will be able to do it. But either way, you're capturing the imaginations of people. You're tapping into something that is, I mean, to me, I mean, I've always been fascinated by time travel movies and books. And it's something that, like, whether or not it happens in our lifetime, a time travel can always come back to the time. Right. So. And, and actually, this is so, you know, usually when you start talking about this, people get like, oh, time travel. But our talk is this, I mean, so these guys are, you know, got the big brains. They're, they're taking time travel very seriously now, uh, and a lot of them have already invented different ways to do it, uh, different methods, and uh, some of them have even been bold enough to say that we'll have it within the next uh, decade. So uh, that's what's happening right now. We're on this cusp of having this ability. I'm just not patient enough, <laughs> so I want to, I want them to come back and give it to us now, because that's the type of world that we'll live in in the future, I personally feel. Uh, basically, where uh, once time travel is invented, it, it's, it's almost like you've opened up a library of, of, of universal knowledge. Any idea, any, 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 uh, every cure of every disease that we will ever invent, any idea, uh, renewable energy, it's all out there. You just have to, it's, it's just kind of like, now you're like kind of uh, navigating through time and, and finding those ideas and then bringing them back and, then, and implementing them in our current uh, timeline. I just love how also you've done a lot of, we talk about in class on different ways of sharing stuff on social media and how to get you know your idea across, your brand across, your ideas across. And you're doing a lot of these like like memes, you know, based yep. on some of these very, very common memes and then just uh, redoing them yourself and, and making them funny, and uh, I 
it seems like you've gotten a lot of response from a lot of these. Like you started getting some pretty killer response. Yeah, them. and after the stream's over, what we'll do is uh, we're gonna I'm gonna open up Facebook. And I'm gonna let you guys basically see the details and the guts on because like what we can see in the background is how many likes, how many you know actual likes and shares and stuff, and how many people were exposed to this type of ad and things like that. So we're gonna show you all that stuff too, so you can kind of see how that all how, how you get to see that from, from the inside. Uh, well, I guess I, I guess I want to show you that uh, that video now. Uh, and if you're watching on Ustream, I posted a link to go to the main Facebook page. It's three posts down from the link that describes this Ustream uh, event. And go ahead and press play on that now, and you can be watching it at home while we watch it here. If you've learned a lot about leadership and making a movement, then let's watch a movement happen start to finish in under three minutes and dissect some lessons. First, of course, a leader needs the guts to stand alone and look ridiculous. But what he's doing is so simple, it's almost instructional. This is key, you must be easy to follow. Now here comes the first follower with a crucial role. He publicly shows everyone else how to follow. Notice how the leader embraces him as an equal. So it's not about the leader anymore, it's about them, plural. Notice how he's calling to his friends to join in. So he takes guts to be a first follower. You stand out, you break ridicule yourself. Being a first follower is an underappreciated form of leadership. The first follower transforms a lone nut into a leader. If the leader is the flint, the first follower is the spark that really makes the fire. Now here's the second follower. This is a turning point. It's proof the first has done well. Now it's not a lone nut, and it's not two nuts. Three is a crowd, and a crowd is news. A movement must be public. Make sure outsiders see more than just the leader. Everyone needs to see the followers because new followers emulate followers, not the leader. Now here come two more people, then three more immediately. Now we've got momentum. This is the tipping point, and yeah. now we have a movement. As more people jump in, it's no longer risky. If they were on the fence before, there's no reason not to join in now. They won't stand out, they won't be ridiculed, and they will be part of the in crowd if they hurry. Yeah. And they will lose their sound and audio. Oh, oh. Part of the crowd, because eventually they'd be ridiculed for not joining. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how a movement is made. So let's recap what we've learned. If you are a version of the shirtless dancing guy, all alone, remember the importance of nurturing your first few followers as equals, making everything clearly about the movement, not you. Public, be easy to follow. But the biggest lesson here, did you catch it? Leadership is over glorified. Yes, it started with the shirtless guy, and he'll get all the credit, but you saw what really happened. It was the first follower that transformed a lone nut into a leader. There's no movement without the first follower. See, we're told that we all <coughs> need to be leaders, but that would be really ineffective. The best way to make a movement care is to courageously follow and show others how to follow. When you find a lone nut doing something great, have the guts to be the first person to stand up and join in. Of course, stragglers are getting yeah, there at the end good. of the dance. <laughs> so, there it is. That is, that, that was basically, that video was the inspiration to, uh, well, I've always had time travel, but I, that's a, that was a TEDx talk that, that you saw there, and that that was that video there uh, was what inspired me to, to start this. And uh, the, my first follower was Nick Joyride. I'm sure he's one of those two viewers right now. He's probably <laughs> watching over in, in, in Oregon. And I and I also want to thank Raul so much for uh, letting me come into this class. And uh, Absolutely. it's very awesome. Thanks for sharing uh, all of this uh, great information uh, with the class, and uh, thanks for being brave. Yeah, and I wanted to do one more thing, so if you'd like to uh, go ahead and, uh, and, and hit that, please, for me. <clears throat> Meanwhile, 
Can we make that really big? I think I'm doing a simple enough dance. I don't know how to dance, but I think you can do it. Yeah? Yeah? Uh, yeah! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 